dumber than a bag of hammers award, okay? <laughs> okay. It can be one of you three, or it can be somebody on the jury. The only caveat, obviously, I'm not eligible for the award, okay? So you can't vote for me. Who do you pick for the dumber than a bag of hammers this year? We're back. Internet, my name is Pratyom, and if you haven't already seen part one, check it out. This is part two of my top 20 best losing final tribal council performances in Survivor. That video title is a mouthful. Part one cover numbers 20 to 11, so now let's get to the top 10. There are a lot of names to sift through, and making the cut for losing performances is tricky. What these players did didn't work. But in the cracks of their failure, could we glean any small successes? In the case of Spencer from season 31 Cambodia, the answer is yeah, we can. Out of the gate, Spencer addresses what could be an elephant in the room, his arrogance at the Final Four Tribal. He digs into that and explains it. He humbles himself, chalks it up to insecurity. Spencer displays a strong amount of humility with this performance, and Fishback has even said at one point he was nervous Spencer was gonna swing the jury his way. He was worried because he was rooting for Jeremy. Spencer also goes on to address his constantly shifting strategy throughout the game, the voting blocks of it all. And I perhaps love most his answer to Cass, who asks him how she could possibly vote for someone who's been calling her a dumbass for two years. Spencer touches upon change, and that's what Cass was all about this season, and it still didn't net him her vote, but hey, it was worth a shot. Last night, my confidence might have gotten carried away, and it might have slipped back toward who I was, but I do believe that I've gained a lot of self-awareness. The Spencer that asks for your vote now is not the same Spencer that said you had 0% chance of winning. You know, good luck tonight and, you know, maybe we'll have a beer later. Next up, we have a curveball. I don't think many are gonna be expecting this one, but isn't that the fun part of these rankings? And number nine, from season 14, Fiji, I have Dreams. Yup, Dreams. The guy who broke the deal with Yao Man over the truck. Say what you want about that deal and how it made you feel, but Dreams owns his story and is consistent, and I like that he doesn't back down. Let's start from the top. He shuts down both Alex and Lisi with their questions. Lisi is an absolute moron, and Dreams smokes her question, and she's left gobsmacked, unable to process that he could have been right. Alex is also quite impressed with what Dreams has to say. He gives a great answer to Michelle, about being homeless and how living in rough conditions wasn't anything new to him. On top of that, he also gets props from Rocky, who says Dreams' answer is what he was looking for. And yeah, when it comes to Yao Man and the truck deal, both Boo and Yao didn't really seem to fully buy Dreams' story about how he was always gonna break the deal, but Dreams was consistent all the way through, even to the live reunion many months later, even after the game was over. And let's be honest, Dreams was working with an inevitable loss on his hands next to Earl, but in the face of overwhelming adversity, when I look at what's actually said, this performance is top 10 worthy. Explain to me why I would endorse that view of the world. Because this part of gaming, this ain't part of the real world. This is it's two separation. This is this game. This game is based on cons, lies, and deceit. All right, fair enough. I manipulated my way to the top. Every time I was on the chopping block, I was able to turn it around and put somebody else on there by laying low for a little while. Do you understand? That was an answer. You see? But that, I mean, that was great. I like that. Number eight. And you know what? Number seven. Yup, we have got a double header on the list because these next two players were against each other at the same final travel council and they both lost. From season 40, Winners at War, I have Michelle and Natalie, two winners who I feel like I've talked a lot about as of late. I mean, it's season 40, there's a lot to talk about. Go figure, two champions put up what I believe are top 10 performances, all while facing what was assuredly an inevitable loss at the hands of Tony. They both kinda knew it, we all kinda knew it, but they weren't going down without a fight. Michelle explains her faults at the beginning of the season and remarks upon her journey to get to this final three. She wasn't dragged, she got there kicking and screaming against overwhelming odds. She does a good job of being her own hype woman, winning key immunity, surviving one more day. She has a lot of conviction and doesn't let up. She went to 15 tribals, a polar opposite from her first season. And then you couple that with the advantages, the fire tokens, how she was working with half the cast. They just happen to get voted out sooner than later. But Michelle was against Tony and yeah, she got the moral victory. I found cracks, I moved within those cracks and 
You know, I think I played a really adaptable and flexible game. I'm pretty proud of the way that I played this game. I think I played with integrity. I think I made a, a lot of great relationships. I had advantages, I had fire tokens. I played that game and I can look myself in the mirror at the end of the day, win or lose, and be proud of that. Yeah, you know, as a fellow controversial winner, I realize why you won your season, and you did a heck of a job this year, and you should be very proud of what you've done. Thank you, Ben. Contrast her performance with Natalie's, who I think I might place above Michelle, although they could easily just be side by side because they literally were. Natalie covers her game on the edge and her strategy coming back in. Boston Rob praises her, and Natalie owns her attitude. She knows that she can have a strong personality, and she tried to rein it in. Parvati praises her honesty. She's open and raw with her thoughts. And I think when you consider that Natalie was the first boot and spent more time out of the game than anyone ever in this position and she's at Final Tribal and she had a lot to say about her experience and how she absolutely smoked the Edge of Extinction, she was nothing if not adaptable. She decimated Tony's alliance upon returning, but unfortunately she missed the biggest lion in the den. It was my way of playing Survivor out on the edge, if hoping if I got back in, the things that I would do would shape the people sitting here. Taking apart the alliance that seemed like they were unbreakable, interjecting myself in there and do what seemed impossible, which was make it all the way to the end after getting voted out freaking first. I was able to completely pull apart the alliance. It was what I chose to do and I'm at peace with my decision that night. Number six. I'm just like a surfer dude, man. Survivor? More like whatever. Number six is Dolphin Boy. It's Ozzy from season 13, Cook Islands. The man who almost won, who was kind of robbed with that final three, actually. Ozzy gives a great performance that nets him four votes and nearly takes the win from Yule. Ozzy obviously touches on his immunity wins, his incredible work ethic, but he also lets the jury know that he was like the Yule of his tribe when the game began. His surfer persona was actually a bit of a strategy. He's not as dumb as you might think. He also gets quite emotional about the relationship with his father and also how he can represent being Mexican American and what that means to him. Ozzy is nearly in my top five and as much as people like to overlook his strategy, he's no slouch at public speaking. Heck, just ask Amanda the next time he plays. You know, I came out here and I embraced every aspect of this game wholeheartedly with my soul in every single moment that I possibly could. And you know, maybe I did play up the fact that, yeah, bro, I'm a surfer dude, don't worry about me. Played that as much as possible. So the strategy point for me, it worked because I just relied on myself. Starting off my top five from season 33, Millennials versus Gen X, we have Hannah. Hannah has a ferocity in her performance, rarely matched by losing finalists. She owns her journey to get to this point wholeheartedly. She gives herself as much credit as she can, both on a personal and strategic level. She is one of the best back and forth slugfests where she gets into it with Adam. They both attempt to defend their perspectives on each other's games. And Hannah does a good job at explaining herself. Adam says she went rogue, but to Hannah, these were moves that worked for her, not Adam. Hannah spends a lot of time trying to reframe the jury's mindset of her game, and she talks about her journey from day one to day 39 and her evolution as a player and why that's worth a vote. She's high up for me because she doesn't back down. She fights and she fights, and when you think she's done, she keeps fighting. And she's very reasonable with what she says. She's not saying absurdities or getting eye rolls. She was just up against a similar player who didn't necessarily need a strong final tribal to win the jury over. I think they already believed Adam was the best and Hannah did all she could to try to change that. And like everyone on this list, her efforts were in vain, but she's still in my top five. I know some of my moves were not as flashy. I know sometimes they seem sporadic, but I feel like I played a very strategic cutthroat game and I think I deserve your vote because I put every single member on the jury in the order that they did. I felt you and Brett were a dangerous pair. So for me, that move was me being adaptable to a game that was constantly moving. But to you or to Brett, it feels unpredictable. And I was not built for this game. I was terrified of everything. I was scared to play in the challenges and pushing through that was what I learned. That that is what it's about and that's something I hope to take into my life. And number four, I have also number three. Yeah, I, I think this might be a first for me on my channel. It's kind of strange, but I actually have two players who sat next to each other again. At number four and three, 
Two players like Michelle and Natalie competed against one another at the same final tribal and lost. I have Ryan and Chrissy from season 35, Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers. Both Ryan and Chrissy put up a great performance and both snagged a few votes for it. And heck, had Devin been in that final three, I think there's a chance they could even grab a few more. Ryan starts off really strong, makes a good pitch for a strategic game, acknowledges his shortcomings. He was blindsided at a few votes. He wasn't the greatest at camp life. The jury does laugh at him and talk over him with that, but it's earnest. It's truthful. It's being humble. He explains his game from the very beginning and has several jurors impressed at his strategy, how he adapted at the swap, how he put a target on Cole with the idol finds. Ryan really flaunts his resume more than almost, I think, any other finalist ever. But this was a jury that wanted to hear it. And he also pulls on some heartstrings with the loved one's visit being the best day of his life. I, I found the advantage on day one on the boat. I used that advantage to build the relationship with Chrissy and Devin, and that was a social game plan on my part. So I had to depend on factors that I'm good at. I had to depend on the social relationship that I could build with people. That was my strength in the game. And my name was never on the chopping block, and it was not because people wanted to take me to the end. It was because I built an of social relationships and bonds with people that they wouldn't let my name come up on the chopping block. That's why I'm sitting here. Nobody dragged me here. Nobody. And right next to him, it's number three. It's Chrissy, who also has a similar performance to Ryan, but I think gets a little more respect for it by the end. She explains her game as being social-based, loyal. She went out of her way to get to know everyone. Joe even puts pressure on that notion, and she nails it. She actually goes above and beyond. Ashley gives Chrissy major props and calls her a genius for her social wherewithal. Chrissy touches upon her immunity wins, only being the fourth woman to ever achieve that. The jury are proud of her. They clearly respect her. She owns her game in her final words and touches upon being a mom. Moms tend to get a bad rap on Survivor and there's quite a handful of them who have reached the finals and then lost. And Chrissy is another, but she applied for 16 years to get on the show and didn't give up. And as she says, the jury can be proud to cast a vote her way. There are times I need to just say, I'm awesome at that. And in this case, I'm saying I kicked ass at the challenges. I kicked ass strategically. I think that I truly did make connections with each of you. I really did try and get to know each of you individually. And I still could probably tell every single one of you personal details about your life, like real things. I've been applying for 16 years. The whole thing is you never give up on your dreams. You can be a 47 year old mom and freaking do this. At number two, I have Chase from season 21, Nicaragua. Oh boy, okay, Chase, Chase, Chase kind of bursts into this tribal like the Kool-Aid man. He's here and he's ready. When he's confronted by Brenda about her hurt emotions, about her blind side, he explains his hand in the matter, how he did try to prevent it. With his answer, he gets her on his side, despite Sash interrupting him to say pretty much nothing of substance. He has a very heartfelt moment with Jane about how much he enjoyed his time with her and what he would do with the money. He wants to take care of his mom. Of course, Fabio is like, uh, I want to do the same. Okay, Fabio, we get it. You can answer when they address you. Chase may be most remembered for getting into it with Marty and Dan, but it's worth noting Chase was never getting their votes anyway. Instead, Chase confronts them and challenges them. He doesn't let them just reduce him to rubble. Alina gets up at the end and respects Chase. He can't him in strong. He explains his wishy-washy persona, how it was being flexible. It was a deliberate strategy that got him to where he was now. And he turns and is like, look, meanwhile, we got Fabio who was blindsided half the season and fell backward into an immunity streak. And considering Chase lost by one vote and Fabio got two votes from both quitters, perhaps there's an argument to be made for Chase deserving the title a little more. I've had this bracelet on my wrist the entire time I've been here. $100,000 is going to Hunt the Cure to help them raise money for cancer. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Second thing is, I'm taking care of my mom. He's got this strategy not to piss people off, but still make it through the game. I don't think that's true. Half the tribal councils we came back from, Fabio was like, what the hell just happened? But he didn't do it by the strategy he's talking about in doing this. He did it by not knowing what the hell was going on <laughs> half the time. At number one, I have a performance where I am still not quite sure how this person didn't get more votes when all was said and done. Number one. I am talking about 
Aubrey from season 32, Ko Rong, who basically says nothing wrong all tribal, gives great answers to an array of jurors, and touches upon many aspects of her game and her journey. She impressed Debbie with her answer. She was close to Debbie and it was tough to take her out. Debbie leaves happy and proud of her. Aubrey compares her game with Ty's and brings up strong points. She rallied the numbers. Ty was her number who flapped in the wind. She gives Sydney a lot of praise, credits her for some big moves, says she wanted to be with Sydney in the final three, but Michelle got in the way and she felt like Ty was easier to beat. She even gives Scott the doofus a good reason to vote for her. Just like Scott, Aubrey played to her personal strengths. She was a worthy adversary who took him out. And isn't that what you want, Scott? A winner who bested you? Aubrey closes with a dollop of passion. And even though I thought Michelle was gonna win when I watched the season live, I couldn't help but feel like I was witnessing a winning performance. And you know, if nothing else, she's number one on this ranking. So there's always that. Game wise, we were headed in two different directions and you were too much of a threat. I'm very proud of you. Even though it might not be how you played the game, I played the game with my strengths, which were personal. I think you can respect that. I made decisions that weren't easy for me. I managed a lot of personalities to get me to where I am now. I love this game. I love seeing what this game brings out on you when you get out here and you just have to go and play. I played my heart out. I think I outwitted. I know I outlasted, and I would say I outplayed. And that's it. Those are the top 10 and overall top 20 best losing Final Tribal Council performances in Survivor. And after making several worst Final Tribal videos a bit ago, I thought it would be nice to balance it out with a few positive ones. I do think a lot of these players could win in another season. Heck, some have. And while they all lost here, there are a lot of little victories in between the cracks. And when these players talk about being proud of themselves, when or lose. I understand why. A big thank you to my patrons for your support, for once again casting your lot in with me and giving me some sense of hope. I got your vote, right? Right? Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Don't forget to humble yourself on your way out just a little bit. And I will see you in the next one once I pin on my honorary badge for winning the Dumber Than a Bag of Hammers award. Wait, what do you mean? This is a sticker? I want to know how many zeros there are in a million. Six. Enough to keep somebody's life running and to help a lot of people. Say that one more time. It's six. Good. Good. Okay, um... Dumber than a bag of hammers award.